Hello friends, welcome to another 3ds Max tutorial. This is Gökçe from cgcave.com and today we are going to learn more about modifiers, uh, the parametric modifiers. Uh, today I want to show you four more uh, parametric modifiers which are shell, lattice, wave and ripple. Uh, first one, shell, it's one of the most used uh, parametric modifiers in 3ds Max, I guess. So let's start with that while we're still fresh. Uh, I'm going to create a plane and just drop the length and width segments to one. I'm going to add an edit poly modifier and just play with this shape a little bit. I'm going to hit W to go to move, hold shift to create copies from edges. And now if I apply a shell modifier on top, you can see that it instantly creates this thickness here. And uh, you can increase the thickness amount. Let's say uh, it should be 10. Uh, you can see that even though it's called outer amount, it goes inward because Max doesn't process the inward and outward as we do. Um, so what I do to understand which way is outward is just input some number for one of these and see if it's the right direction. If it's not, then zero this one and input uh, in the other one. So you can use it like this. So uh, it's very cool uh, because it creates uh, a lot of new faces for us. It, uh, this uh, object has two directions now. You can see it in both directions and everything. So it's very uh, usable or useful tool uh, in 3ds Max, I guess. Uh, I want to show, show you some uh, little tricks you can do with this or uh, let's say uh, some little adjustments so that uh, it should behave as you as expect. Uh, there are some weird things with this uh, modifier. Uh, first one is uh, this is a trick uh, that you can use to uh, get sharp edges with turbo smooth uh, for uh, shell. Uh, first I want to show you how they um, behave with each other shell and turbo smooth. It's very uh, awkward so I want to talk about this a little bit. Let's just apply a turbo smooth on top and you can right away see that uh, it softens everywhere like on the edges as well uh, the corners as well so this may not be uh, a thing you want, want or maybe it is I don't know but uh, for this example let's say it's not and you want to make the edges at least sharp for example so you can go back to shell and increase these segments. Let me show you what it does, uh, actually. If you increase these segments, you can see that it adds new segments to these edges. And if you turbo smooth now, you can see that we have sharper edges. Not corners, but edges are sharper, as you can see. Uh, let's uh, do this with the show end result button active. And uh, I, I want to let you see uh, how it behaves as we add them. Uh, I'll drop this to one again and just increase it. And you can see that as you increase the number, the uh, sharpness increases as well. Okay, this is a uh, an interesting way to use these uh, edge segments. Now, by the way, if you, uh, let's zero this out again. If you apply turbo smooth before shell, then something uh, different happens. Let me pull this down by the way you can yeah you can just uh, click and drag and change the order of these uh, modifiers which is very cool as well you can just drag uh, click and drag turbo smooth underneath shell and you can right away see that then you have sharp edges and sharp corners as well so you you have three options you can use uh, with this these two uh, modifiers and, and the combination of them and as I uh, talk about this, uh, I really realize that uh, combining these modifiers are really important and uh, you can end up with really interesting things uh, with combining these. So try to think uh, with uh, or try to think about this uh, concept. Okay, the reason this happens is uh, when you add a turbo smooth to this edit poly, it couldn't uh, soften the corners because they don't have any continuity there is this uh, it behaves this uh, just as a sheet i guess and then if you, uh, if you add shell on top then you have this uh, different result 
Okay, so try to think of uh, shell and turbo smooth this way, please. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this and I want to show you one more thing about shell, which is very tedious if you don't know it. <laughs> so I want to show you, uh, I want to save you a lot of trouble. <laughs> uh, let's create a box. I'm trying to create a room, for example, L-shaped room. Uh, I'm going to uh, input 300 uh, centimeters for each side and I'm going to move this to the origin. I'm going to apply a uh, an edit poly on top and let's say I want to extrude this edge. Let's use uh, extrude settings. Uh, 300 centimeters again and extrude this edge 300 centimeters again. Okay. Now let's say we want to get rid of these uh, top and bottom faces. Uh, you can use them. You can detach and keep them for ceiling and uh, and the floor, but uh, whatever. For now, it's not very important for me. And now if I apply a shell modifier on top, uh, you can see that something weird, really, uh, really weird happens. Uh, let's keep this outward, uh, this shell outward. And you can see that this edge is, uh, for some reason, I'm going to tell you what that reason is. Uh, it will make sense, but uh, when you first see this, it's very weird. For some <laughs> godforsaken reason, uh, this edge is not straight. Okay. The reason for this is, by the way, it's very simple. And uh, when you when I tell you about this, you will say, ah, okay, it makes sense. But at first, it, uh, at least it's uh, very weird. The reason for this is because uh, 3ds Max is trying to keep this edge and this edge in the same height and this is an, uh, a perpendicular uh, edge to this one. Uh, this is a 45 degree uh, angle. This has a 45 degree angle according to this one. So the top points are not matching and this makes perfect sense. Uh, but there is a button, there is a tick for this in uh, shell. I wanted to talk about that. If you go to the shell properties and slide down you will see that there's a uh, tick called straight in corners. If you click on this, you will get this perfect result. Okay. The way it should be. Uh, so I guess maybe this should uh, be ticked uh, default. Okay. So this is uh, the th second thing I wanted to talk about. Yeah, we have a lot of different options uh, in here as well, but I recommend you to check out uh, these on Google or just read them and you mostly will understand what they mean. Uh, so I'm not going to just uh, go through button by button. Uh, I want to talk about some other modifiers. The second one is lettuce. Uh, lettuce is... Uh, it's not that I use this uh, uh, in my everyday uh, workflow, but uh, some models, some shapes are really easy to create with this and it saves us a lot of time. So I want to show this to you. Uh, let's start with a box and let's assign lettuce modifier right away. You will uh, directly see that it creates this uh, shape from the wireframe. And yeah, it, it's, I guess, uh, fair to think of it like that. You have some uh, options about the corners and uh, the cross section. Let's uh, go through them. Uh, you can set, tell um, lattice to just create joints, just create struts, or just create, uh, just or, or to create both of them. And you can increase the strut radius, as you can see, strut segments, or strut sides, which will help us make this uh, circular. And uh, you can add the caps for struts, uh, whatever. You can, this is just a straightforward reading thing, so I'm not going to go through all of these again. Uh, you can change the shape of the corners, as you can see. You can change the radius of the corners as well. And add some segments. Yeah, uh, you can see that we can create this kind of a shape really easily. And what we can do more is you can add segments to the box. Let's say, uh, let's disable the show and result and add some segments to width, for example. And when you go back to lattice or click on show and result, you can see that it adds more edges. If I increase more segments, it can add more edges as well. And 
this maybe snaps some ideas in your mind like yeah this is uh, very useful for this and that but uh, let me show you an original way of using this uh, I was just playing with it and came up with this idea uh, let's say we want to create a balcony and some railings for it for example uh, if I create this bottom base box let's say uh, I guess 120 for the length and 150 for the width maybe even 180 and 20 centimeters for the height actually let's put uh, let's change the side to minus 20 centimeters and I want to move this to the origin as always now let's create another box on top of this I'm going to hit, uh, hit S to keep the dimensions and change the height to 80 centimeters or a meter whatever and let's add an edit poly on top of this uh, sorry before that I want to drop the segments to one and now I can delete these okay now if I apply a lattice to this you can right away see that we can create these frames or railings let's say for the balcony real easy and uh, let's uh, just or let's change this to ecosa and increase the segments and maybe drop the Add this a little bit, and also I want to increase the seg, seg, uh, side segments for the struts as well. Yeah, okay. Now, if I go back to edit poly, I can uh, hit two, select this edge, hit Alt R for ring, and connect these. Uh, if I hit Alt S, I can see the end result, and you can see that. I can add some more railings here and do the same for these these two edges and you can see that we can create this really easily and it's still parametric by the way you can go back to edit poly and add or uh, remove some stuff from here as well uh, if you uh, want to make some final adjustments you want to you can get rid of the parametricness of the object to do that you can just uh, right click convert to edit poly, editable poly, or you can add an other edit poly. I know that uh, you can still see the old modifiers at the bottom, but if you go ahead and delete something, then it will be uh, illogical to go back because, let me show you. If you delete some stuff with edit poly uh, on top, then you can't really go back down because this will happen. If I go back down and change the, um, let's say I want to add more edges to here, for example. Now, if I hit Alt S, it it didn't it didn't really blow up, but what we did with Edit Poly is gone now. I guess it deleted some random stuff, but I can see it. Maybe they are in the joints. Uh, but it should mess up even more but they uh, improve this algorithm of course as the max uh, uh, ages I guess uh, but uh, anyways you can still see that the last edit poly doesn't have any effect on the object okay so be careful about this if you delete some stuff then it uh, will be awkward to go back and change other things okay this is how I use lattice now two more modifiers which are uh, somewhat useful is they are not again a everyday workflow uh, modifiers but you can combine these and come up with some stuff in my opinion uh, first of them is wave and the other one is ripple so let's show them uh, together I'm going to create two planes this time uh, first let's input some dimensions for this uh, 300 by 300 and let's introduce some segments because without segments modifiers don't really work as you can see uh, let's input 50 by 50 yeah now let's create a copy of this and what wave does is it creates this wave kind of uh, parametric um, shape again uh, you can see that the first one amplitude one is the amplitude for the mid uh, points of the uh, waves and amplitude 2 is the edge amplitude of those waves uh, you can increase one of them 
uh, according to the other end. The, the, yeah, you can see that it's really interesting shapes just show up and you can play it these. It, for example, to me, this looks like a Japanese uh, traditional Edo, Edo, kind, uh, Edo type uh, roofs, for example. Uh, I don't know. Um, so as you as you play with them, uh, you uh, your imagination will ignite as well. Uh, that's what I like about these modifiers, I guess. And wavelength is the uh, length between these two points here. If you increase that, it will be the length will increase, and if you decrease that, they will be close closer to each other. And if you start to see these type of jaggedness on the edges then you need to increase the segments, let's say 100 by 100, and you will see that it looks better. Uh, let's even increase this further. You can see that as you increase it, it becomes smoother and smoother. And um, phase is uh, a, something to animate it, actually. Let me show you to, how to animate it. Again, I'm getting ahead of myself, as always. I'm going to enable auto key going to pull this to the end and increase the face and you can see that it animates right away as I told you these modifiers are really good for animations as well okay and the last property is decay and you can see that this what this does is it uh, creates this uh, decay effect through the edges okay Okay, so let's uh, see what Ripple does this time. Let's increase the uh, segments right away. And if I apply a Ripple, and you can see that if I increase these amplitudes, the first one is for one uh, the x-axis, and the second one is for the y-axis, uh, the amplitudes. And wavelength is, again, the distance between these two peaks. And uh, phase is, again, same thing with the wave and decay is uh, again it uh, helps you decay the effect uh, through the edges and this is very cool as well it, the, you can create like uh, water drop effects uh, with this i guess and a lot of different things as well as you if you think really think about it okay thanks i hope this was useful for you now uh, if you come up with interesting shapes with these uh, modifiers please share them on our facebook group uh, or in our instagram account uh, I, i'm really looking forward uh, what you sh uh, what you share in these groups because it helps me uh, get a feedback from you and uh, which helps me continue uh, recording these lessons i guess Thanks for listening. If you find it useful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. Thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.